Hello, everybody. It is me once again, Jack Childress, on a very special ish, uh, episode of the Book Asylum podcast. We're coming to you on a Sunday because we have someone that we absolutely need to talk to because they got a lot going on right now. Got my man back in the place, Anthony freaking Castro. How are you doing, brother? Doing great, man. It's good to be back. I always love being on here with you guys. Man, love having you on, dude. You're always entertaining, and you've got so much going on right now, dude. Let's get started here. You're working on the Bad Wabbit comic book. Yes, sir. I've got you know a lot of people that are you know follow you on Facebook have been seeing the seeing this bad boy build. You know, a little here, a little there. Love the Fox character. Love that. <laughs> Looking great. So, when you first came up with this idea, what was it that inspired you to say, you know what, I'm not going to just think about it. I'm going to actually do it. I think it was the, was the the support that I got uh, because, like I said, when Bad Wabbit came about uh, during a really rough time in my life, and I was, uh, you know, suffering for, really suffering from heart failure. I was in bed uh, for about three and a half months, and uh, they told me I was dying. Uh, that wow! Was, yeah, so they were like, "Yeah, you might want to get your stuff in order uh, because it's, it's not looking good." And so I ended up in bed for like three months, uh, recouping from that. And in that three months, I started drawing. And uh, one of my first drawings, my first character that I created was actually Toxic Pig, uh, the little pig with the gas mask. That was yeah, that's the, he, uh, I like that. Well, that was a cool one. <laughs> so uh, shortly after that, I came up with Space Monkey. Uh, he's the bartender for the the comic book. He's the guy behind the bar. And then the last one I came up with was Bad Wabbit. And everybody really gravitated towards Bad Wabbit for some reason. They really liked him. They thought he was the most awesome character. And all he was at the time was just a character I was putting on shirts, uh, trying mm -hmm. to study for my medication and stuff like that. And uh, people were like, man, he looks like he's got a backstory. He looks like he's he would be perfect for like a comic book or a cartoon or something. Right. And I, and I thought about that and I was like, you know what? It's not a bad idea. Let's give it a shot. Uh, so I started developing uh, the character a little bit more, giving him more of a backstory. Uh, a lot of his uh, backstory is, is traumatic. Uh, but a lot of it was also kind of uh, based on some of the stuff I've been through in my life. I did not have uh, the most uh, perfect upbringing. Um, I was uh, heavily involved in gangs, violence, drugs, alcohol, you know, really bad stuff. I've seen a lot of uh, fucked up things in my life. Mm. And uh, but, you know, being told you're dying kind of puts a new perspective on life. <laughs> and you kind I of can I can actually it. relate to that. That's it's not cool. No. It makes you reevaluate a lot. Exactly, and I had to reevaluate myself a lot. So I came up with Bad Wabbit, and I kind of wanted to make him uh, an extension of that process of healing, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally. And it came out to be a really awesome story. Uh, him himself is going to be a, a story of redemption and self discovery. Uh, he's going to, when we meet him, like I said, you know, when we meet him, he is down and out. He hates life. He doesn't care about anything. He just wants to crawl in a bottle and die, uh, mm. you know, and by the end of this whole journey, I'm not even sure how long this is going to go. However long the fans want it to go, that's how long it's going to go. But Heck yeah, you know, and, but by the end of it, I'm hoping that he, you guys see that he has changed as a person or a rabbit, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, Bugs Bunny's evil, evil cousin kind of thing. Yeah, <laughs> basically. I mean, it's it's going to be an adventure. It's going to be an adventure of self discovery and and a redemption for him. Uh, just like me fighting through heart failure and and all uh, getting to where I'm at right now has been a fight for you know self redemption and and healing and just kind of like trying to cope with the things i've been through has been really helpful uh this last three years uh drawing and stuff like that has been really helpful and therapeutic so i want to bring that to everybody and show them what i've been doing and see how it goes you know heck yeah well i for one am very thankful that one you're still with us that's kind of a big deal mm -hmm. and two you've decided you know to to pursue something that you know you you just to, to create that's the whole thing and so many people have ideas you know they're out there with stuff going through their minds and they never use any of it 
Yeah. And you know, see you're out there doing it and to watch it almost from day one as you've been creating this character and showing it to the world. It's like, man, I, I'm getting more and more excited about physically holding a copy in my hand. Like I'm I'm ready for this. Now, real quick, I'm gonna catch us up on some comments. We got a few people out there watching this right now. Okay. Hello, Angel. Angel's out there. Richard says, What's up? Hey. Kristen Vincent says, Howdy do. Uh, Dungeon Dan, what's up, ladies? That's what he says. And then Angel said, I feel you on seeing the bad stuff, Anthony. And then Aiden says, Hi. And we're all caught up. Well, hey, everybody. Um, everybody, also, I want to let you guys know whoever comments, whoever's watching, please comment. Um, I'm going to be doing a random draw of whoever comments, uh, not just who watches, but who comments. At least say mm hi. -hmm. I'm going to do a random draw uh, uh, by the end of this, and I'm going to pick one winner who gets a hand-drawn sketch of Bad Wabbit by me, and I'm going to sign it and mail it to you. I'll get with you after you to get your address or wherever you want me to send it to. So keep it, you know, stay, stay tuned. It's going to be awesome. Hell yeah, and it's funny you said stay tuned. <laughs> but I'm... <laughs> yeah okay dad joke i reckon that will get i'll let that one slide i don't know what i was thinking but man um how, how are you going about um reaching out i mean because i know you obviously do the facebook thing like like everybody hitting you know any place that you can yeah. but uh what other things are you doing to get the word out that you know this is a thing it's coming get ready for it well uh this last the on the sixth of uh this month i went to my sister my sister owns uh her and her husband own a comic book store it's called titan moon comics it's here in texas mm -hmm. in cedar park look it up if you guys live close it's an awesome awesome place um but i went out there and kind of you know kissed some hands and shook some babies <laughs> <laughs> handed out some flyers um my sister has a flyer up with my barcode on it so people can uh, or my qr code and they can scan it and go be taken to the kickstarter uh, the Kickstarter's in pre-launch mode right now, but I'm just trying to build a following, trying to get everybody to notice that it is there. It is happening. This is a very real thing. It's not, you know, I'm not just walking around. Like, I'm doing comics. I do because <laughs> there's a lot of people that do that, and I am not one of those. Uh, but yeah, I've also uh, made out, out some awesome cards, uh, business cards uh, that I've been handing out. Uh, this is one of them. Oh, cool. It's got Bad Wabbit on the front, and of course, you got the QR code on the back. And I've been putting those out at places in the mall, like Spencer's and Fye and GameStop, and anywhere I think somebody might be interested in picking up one and checking it out. Um, not really uh, as far as as far as marketing goes. I'm not like out there with commercials and stuff. I did want to get one. But I just couldn't pull the money together to get it animated. It was going to be mm -hmm. a really cool uh, Japanese animated freaking bad wabbit cartoon. Uh, just kind of like a 60 second thing. But it never, it never, it never happened. So, but, you know, it is what it is. And I'm, I'm happy I've got what I got. So. Well, I mean, there's always the future. You never know. Exactly. You know, you get the, get the bad boy out there, get it selling. Next thing you know start dropping the big cool commercials you know oh yeah that's gonna happen i promise uh i'm i'm very hell bent on it well now i'm seeing something hanging on the wall behind you back there what we got going on oh well that's my that's my wall of awesomeness uh i've got uh a couple of awesome things i've got i see i see you're like me i'm a i'm vegeta over um goku, uh, goku all day every day well, Vegeta, I like because of his uh, his his story arc. Uh, he went from a bad guy uh, to having a family and giving a shit, you know. And I can relate to that because when uh, I was younger, I was very much not. I did not care. <laughs> I I like to fight, and I like to drink, and I like to raise hell. And uh, it was only after I met my wife and started uh, dating her and getting kind of like giving a damn, about mm -hmm. it, you know. And so now I got two boys and a family. And don't worry, I'm still ready to fight, but for the right reasons, <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, hell yeah, man! That's awesome, man! Congratulations, you got. I mean, you got it all going on now. I mean, you really do. 
yeah, I mean, it's it's really a, an amazing thing because I, I didn't expect to be here. I didn't expect to get to this this far. You know, when I first started this, like I said, it was just some doodles and I was having people watch me draw and uh, just the support and the encouragement that I've gotten from so many people. Uh, Chris Philbrook being one of the main ones. Uh, he is definitely uh, a very central part of uh, what I got going on now, because if it wasn't for him, I would have never gotten this far. He really uh, encouraged me uh, whenever I doubted myself, he'd say, you know, shut the hell up and do it. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so uh, that sounds about right. Yeah. I mean, uh, he's really helped me out a lot and I love the guy dearly. Um, so uh, I really hope that he is involved with future uh, issues of bad wabbit, uh, maybe even write one or two himself. Oh, uh, that would be cool. Yeah, I would. And I really, really hope that happens one day. Ooh, alternate universe. Yeah. Here, now hear me out on this. <laughs> Adrian, but as an animal character, like what are you ever you would picture Adrian being in the animal kingdom in the Bad Wabbit universe going on some adventure? Warthog with a mohawk. Kind of like Bebop or was it Rocksteady? <laughs> uh, I think Rocksteady. Yeah. I think. I think. Okay. Don't hold me to that. It's been, it's been years, man. It's been years. My brain can't remember everything. Those guys uh, are in a lot of Ninja Turtle stuff anymore. And I'm just, I'm kind of upset about that. Yeah, no, you see they're, uh, I think they're going to try to make a, a movie out of the Ronin storyline. You know? Yeah, I heard they're coming out with a new Ninja Turtle movie. It's going to be rated R. It's going to be mm -hmm. extremely adult, but that's awesome. I've been looking forward to it. Heck yeah, no doubt. So what has been the toughest part about, the journey from the moment you sat down for the very first time and said, here we go to where you are now. Uh, well, there's been a lot of challenges, honestly. Uh, I think the main one, and I think anybody can relate to it is finances. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, cause I'm on disability. I, I don't have a job. I work, I don't work. Uh, I, my heart is not the greatest. So doing hard labor, like I was used to is not in my uh, wheelhouse at the moment. Uh, so I get very little money a month uh, on disability, and most of that goes uh, towards bills and food and trying to help my wife with the, with the rent and all that stuff. So I scrape together literally anything I can uh, to try and get this, um, you know, done. Uh, the artist that I have, God bless him, uh, is amazing uh, with the understanding of that. He is willing to do it. He, uh, excuse me, he wrote, uh, he wrote me the other night because I gave him an unedited, very raw uh, look at book two of Bad Wabbit. And he wrote back, he goes, dude, this is amazing. He said, I, I am de I'm dedicating myself fully to this series. I want to be the main uh, artist for this whole series because yeah. if it's, if the rest of it's going to keep going that much, you know, like better each one, he said, I, I want to be a part of it, you know, so uh, he's been very understanding about the financial part. Uh, the second biggest challenge is my my, I guess you would say, I don't want to say self-esteem, I guess confidence in my mm -hmm. writing. And uh, I'm not a, a, a published writer. You know, I've written some things. My main forte when I was younger was writing lyrics for my rap songs because I, <laughs> I thought I was going to be the coolest rapper ever. And I almost got sponsored by Budweiser because they uh, they came to one of my shows and uh, said, hey, man, you're really good. We want to sponsor you. And that ended up going uh, south because I got arrested and oh. I missed that show. Well, so, hell, that should have been street cred right there with Budweiser. Like, yeah, you live in that life. <laughs> I ended up spending all my money and time trying to get legal after that. So I didn't get a chance to get on stage for a while. Damn. And by then, by then I had uh, my first son coming. So it was, you know, I chose, I chose father life over uh, thug life, I guess you could say. <laughs> I'd say you made the right call. Yeah. You know, just to be honest there. Uh, so now, yeah, uh, no, go ahead. Oh, I was, I was going to ask you um, your art style is very unique it it, does, it feels like kind of a of a mish, mishmash of different styles 
that come together to make your style. Because, I mean, I feel a little anime in it, mm-hmm. but I also feel, you know, some just traditional cartoon art. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of, you got a little going on right there. Is that, am I right in my interpretation? I, I, I think so, because I'm not a traditional artist. I don't, I didn't have any kind of training. I didn't, I didn't go to art school. Uh, back when I was in college, I did 3D animate. I went for 3D animation, never graduated. Uh, one of my classes was art, of course, but I was never in the league that I'm in now. Like back then I was able to do stick figures pretty well. <laughs> but a start somewhere yeah and uh but over the last three years especially i have been watching so many uh youtube videos of it's like if i see something that i don't know how to do i will go and watch a youtube video on how to do it and i won't te- i won't usually do it the way they show it mm-hmm. I won't do it the way that best fits me so like they'll they'll show you a certain way to do it, and I'll be like, well, if I do it sort of like that, but then change this, that's kind of easier for me. So mm-hmm. whatever's easier for me, that's the way I do it. And so that's why when you look at my stuff, you get sort of the mashup of different kinds of uh, styles and and you know ways to do things. Like people watch me do it live, and they're like. Huh, I never thought about doing that. That's easier. I'm like, yeah, it's, that's why I do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, I'm gonna tell you, man. I absolutely love the art style. I mean, I mean, before I even got to know you a little bit, that's the first. That was your first impression was Bad yeah. Wabbit, and I saw that and I went, dude, what is this? <laughs> this is cool. <laughs> and so, you know, long story short, now we're here hanging out talking about it because, Thank man, you. I'm I'm on board the team that's like, we got to get this done. <laughs> it's got to be out there, man, because it's. Glad to have you, man. You know, and I know you got the Kickstarter getting ready to go, which I will be participating in as much as I can. You know, ain't got that, you know, Rockefeller money over here, but I'll do everything I can to help this out because like I guess I want this to hit yeah. because I think it will. I really do think it will. I think it's going to be amazing, man. I'm, I'm really super psyched about it because, I mean, it's been three years coming. It's been a long, long, long journey. I'm, I'm really super psyched oh, about sorry, it because I mean, it's been three years coming. Trying to put the link here in the comments so people can go and check it out. Oh, and uh, real quick, um, Angel co- commented, uh, the confidence is huge for me as well. Mind you, I've sold many books or many copies. It still kicks my ass. Yeah, I understand, man. It's it's hard to be confident when you're unsure about what you're doing because you're not going to be sure until you put it out there, though. See, that's, mm-hmm. that's the catch-22. It's like you got to be confident enough to put it out because if you're if you don't know if it's good, you're you're not gonna know if you're confident enough. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like you're not gonna know. Yep. If confidence pays off unless you actually do what you set out to do, and that's one of the big uh, things that happened to me is I was really like I don't know if I want to do this, but like I said, when I wrote the first script for Bad Web, it was actually about 46 pages. It was, mm-hmm. it was enough to do like an actual small graphic novel. Yeah. And, um, I sent it to Chris because he said he'd take a look at it. And like I said, I was expecting him to hit me back with, oh, it needs this and that, and you need to change this and all that stuff. And uh, I was like, okay, here it comes, here it comes. And he was like, <laughs> I really can't do much with this. He goes, this is really good. And I was like, what? Really? <laughs> Are you serious? And so that's when I realized that I might actually have something, you know, and, you know, on the sly, me and Chris, we, we, we banter sometimes back and forth. He'll ask me, Hey man, wh- what's up with this? And I'll be like, I'll give him the backstory of why that is. And he'd be like, that's pretty cool. You know? And so like knowing that, it just keeps me going, man, knowing that I got something, you know, I think I really do have something and I'm not being cocky. I'm not being, uh, you know, one of those people that like to promote themselves because it's me, but I really think this is uh, going to be cool. And I think everybody's going to be able to get on board with it. Well, man, I'm, you know, because we keep bringing up Chris, obviously he's got a huge fan base. There's people that just will drop anything they're doing the moment he puts something out, snatch it up, and either read it, listen to it, whatever, because, I mean, he's kind of a big deal, you know? Yes. So how does it feel to know that you've got that resource that oh. you can go to and be like, hey, Chris, I need some help. And he's like, all right, what you need? I mean, that's cool as hell, man. 
it's a dream come true, man. Because I tell you this, Chris, uh, for those who don't know who Chris is, Chris Philbrook, he's the creator of Adrian's Undead Diary, an amazing zombie series that I was a fan of uh, at least a year and a half before I ever even spoke to Chris. Uh, uh, you know, and I was, I, I used to go to work and I'd put in uh, AUD and I would go through every single book and just listen to them. Uh, and then I talked to him on Instagram, said, hey, man, I really like your books. I think they're amazing. I appreciate it. And uh, unlike most people who have that clout, he actually hit me back and was like, man, I really appreciate that. And just, you know, I can't really set a timeline, but over a period of time, we and him became very uh, talkative with each other. And uh, he saw what I was doing. And he offered his services to check it out and see if he, you know, wanted to edit it. And uh, he edited it and uh, we split the script up into two books. So now we have the first two uh, books already ready to go. Um, <laughs> um, just real quick. Um, oh, certain, Carl Meadows. Uh, yeah, I was going to say a certain character named Carl Meadows. Said, yeah, that Chris Bell is kind of an all right dude. <laughs> He's oh, certain. since since he's here, hello, mate. How are you doing, Governor? I hope you come over some crumpets later. Tip top and all bit. And his head just exploded. <laughs> no, uh, Chris uh, or Carl Meadows uh, is a very awesome writer in his own right. Uh, he did the Locky series, which I enjoyed <laughs> immensely. I still listen to them every now and then. Just right there. Of it. Locky is somebody I really think is amazing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just saw that. Yeah. <laughs> I will cut you, children. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, I can see I'm probably going to wind up in one of his books and last about three seconds before I'm eviscerated by something. Yeah. <laughs> Horribly. <laughs> He knows every time he pops by, you know, he's going to he's going to catch the Dick Van Dyke from Mary Poppins. It's just happening. <laughs> Dungeon <Dan. laughs> Keep it up, Jack. You'll dissolve any and all trade agreements with that country. <laughs> so I'm starting an international incident during his takeover today. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, what man. are we going to do? What are you going to do? But yeah, um, Chris has, like I said, you know, Chris has been an amazing uh, asset to this. Um, and in, in pure Chris style, I, I, when this all started, I offered him, uh, you know, some kind of, uh, rights, some kind of something, you know, I wanted to give him something too, you know, and he said, no, man, I just want to help you. And so, so that was really, really shows his character. You know, he's, he's an amazing, amazing person. So he's on the front, his name is on the front of that book as the editor. And um, I hope it stays there for many issues to come. Hell to the yeah. Well, again, when it comes to Chris, first off, he does have great character, but he's also kind of a character. Yes. You know, yes, if, you, if you ever yeah. get a chance to interact with Chris Philbrook, ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you now, you've got to keep your head on a swivel with him because he'll come at you. He's a funny dude. Funny, funny dude. Funny, funny guy, man. So now going forward, um, have you really like, how far into this story are you? Like you're talking, having to leave this thing potentially open-ended. If like you said, if it starts selling good, you can't just have an ending and all of a sudden you're like, crap, now I got to reboot it. Well, or I have a definitive end for bad Wabbit. Mm -hmm. um, I know exactly how I want it to end uh, his story and that's been the way I wanted it to end ever since I created the story mm -hmm. but how many adventures are in between the beginning and that end is open ended uh, because I want to see how far we can take him um, I want to see how many uh, issues the fans want to have you know because like if if the first one drops, I know the first one's an introductory story. Uh, the second one is very much like uh, Indiana Jones escape uh, kind of story. It's going to mm. have chases, explosions, 
guns going off uh indiana jones style fights where he's got to fight the bigger guy that you don't know if he's going to beat him and all that i mean it's it's going to be very based in the indiana jones uh adventure style and <laughs> it's going to be awesome yeah, and, i was going to uh, say you had you had me at indiana jones yeah like I, okay I, here we go I'm a big fan of those kind of movies, Indiana Jones, Star Wars, um, you know, all the really cool chase scenes that they have in those kind of movies, uh, the the speeder bike and indoor and all that stuff. Uh, it's it's kind of based on those kind of things that I liked about those movies. So book two is going to be a big adventure. It's going to be really, really awesome. Uh, book three. Um, going on you know i don't want to give away too much but you know book three going on it's going to be uh very much based uh it's going to have a lot of adventure but it's going to be more based on his self-discovery adventure that i'm or journey that i'm trying to to uh you know put him on because if he's just constantly running around blowing shit up you don't really get a lot of introspective, uh, you know, <laughs> so, you know, but it's going to, it's going to, it's going to be an adventure, but at the same time, you're going to get to see more of who bad Wabbit really is, what he's been through, uh, going back all the way to his parents before he was an orphan, uh, living on the streets, uh, you know, before he was fighting for money, you know, just to stay alive. And that's how he learned how to fight. You know, he was, a he, he fought for money, uh that's something uh i can relate to i i did that at one point backyard brawls uh so it was you know he a lot of his stuff that he's gone through i've kind of gone through in a in in a you know loose looser kind of way but it's it's definitely reflective in the way he uh the reason why he is the way he is okay well now i was just this something it's kind of a random question but you know, kept talking about Indiana Jones. Remember how Indiana Jones had to think about snakes? Oh, Couldn't yeah. Freaking stand snakes. Uh, like Adrian, his is with the Jinx fairy. You know, sure. can't stand that bitch. Does Bad Wabbit have like this one thing that's going to be a recurring theme that just gets on his nerves? Or like how Deadpool loving chimichangas is, does he have a thing? Liquor. <laughs> he, I, he, like, he likes to drink. Uh, that's his, his weakness. And but the thing is, uh, just like uh, Popeye, uh, mm -hmm. spinach, uh, it kind of uh, gives him that boost, you know. But at the same time, he struggles with it because uh, it's his demon. It's his inner, you know, it's the thing that he needs to get rid of uh, to be that better person. So at the same time, you know, it's like his kryptonite. Yeah. It's like, I, I, it's like the thing, you know, you don't need, you don't want it. You can't. It's not good for you, but you want it anyways, and you do it anyways. And that's a very apt description of alcoholism. Uh, oh, yeah. Something else that I dealt with for a long time. Uh, you know, every now and then I may have a beer or, you know, a drink or something like that. But I was polishing off two liters of whiskey a day and Hot damn. It with a 12 pack and still going to work and doing my thing, you know. And that uh, I want to kind of reflect that in his person that struggle that constant struggle of like i know i want to do it but i know i shouldn't and at some point we're going to get to there in his uh journey and hopefully we'll have a totally sober wabbit by the end but i'm not holding my breath on that <laughs> dude i'm telling you i just you telling the general without giving spoilers away but just the general overview of what this is going to be man it's going to be able to touch a lot of different people in a lot of different ways because you're going to have some that are going to be just into the action adventure of it and all that but then you're going to have others that have dealt with these issues exactly. and this character could be uplifting to them you know while being so relatable you know well yeah that's the that's the whole point is i want people to see that no matter how low you get in life because like i said you know when we meet that way he's at his lowest I mean, he's living in a shit trailer on the side of a road in the middle of nowhere across from a bar that he bounces at for drinks, for drinks, basically, you know, and that's where we find him. But I and by the end of this whole story, I'm hoping that he ends up saving this planet that's dying because it is a dying planet. It's uh, 
a futuristic dystopian world mm-hmm. where humans did exist and i might have a human or two show up in the series um you know bearded ones with sunglasses maybe <laughs> oh, shit. no uh but it's a world where like pollution and nuclear war and just the devastation of forests and all this shit that's that's happened to our planet because of us humans has caused the uh mutation and evolution of these anthros is what i call them in the they're anthros anthropomorphic creatures and okay. um i don't know if you've ever seen uh sweet tooth no i have not seen sweet tooth but it's yeah. the one with the the kid with the exactly and yeah. basically the premise of that is human kids are starting to be born with animalistic features uh this is more of the opposite animals are starting to be born with humanistic features oh and wow that's the mutation and as they mutate and evolve they become you know like bad wabbit and space monkey and foxy fox and all my characters and um uh, but it is very much based in our world. It is our earth. It is uh, that future, you know? And also I'm gonna, also one of the things I wanted to touch on in the series is the effect humans have had on our planet. That's another thing that I wanted to kind of touch base on. Um, I don't know if you've ever watched the um, series, uh, what is it, Love, Death and Robots, I think? mm of course, um, I've gotten real bad about watching anything these days because there's so many uh, TBR uh, action going on. Well, for anybody out there that does know that series, there's a there's a skit on there. There's a little series called Three Robots, and they're basically going through the rubble of the human society or human culture, uh, human wastelands. Uh, no more humans, you know. But they're going like, you know, they go through there and they like, why did they do this? And, oh, that's stupid. You know, like, why would they even try that? Shit? You know, and that's kind of like what there's going to be a, 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 a comment. There's going to be an issue where Toxic Pig and Bad Wabbit are going through uh, something like that, where they're going to be, oh, neat. you know, a humanoid ruins. And they're going to be like, what is this? Why did they do that? And, you know, how did they end up like this? You know, and it's going to just basically poke fun at the stupidity of human nature, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so All right, another, another random dumb question by me, just because for some reason it keeps going through my head, because I got to think, you know, all these characters, they eat, they drink just like we do. And, you know, we're accustomed to having things like, not know, uh, you know, bacon. We have bacon. So if I were to eat bacon made from toxic pig, would I die? Yes, immediately. Okay. Now, toxic pig, the reason he doesn't seem as evolved as the rest of everybody else is because he is an actual pig. He's not a he's not one of the anthros. Oh. He is a science experiment. And he's probably older uh than anybody alive at the moment. Hmm. So that story will be told throughout the issues. But just so you know, he is not an anthro. He is an actual pig. And he was done, uh, he had lots of science experiments done on him. And he uh, wears that gas mask so that he doesn't kill everything around him because his breath, his insides are so toxic that if he was to take that mask off and just give one good exhale, you could probably kill everything in a mile radius. Wow. See, I thought it when I was actually going to ask you if the mask was to help protect him. So yeah. that's a whole different twist. It's help to actually protect everybody else from him. Yes. And he doesn't need to eat or drink like everybody else. The mask pretty much takes care of all that stuff. Oh, neat. Yeah. Dude, that's imagination on a whole other level right there. I mean, yeah. that's well, cool as hell. Well, I was like, you know, uh, he's got a mask on. How is he going to eat? I said, well, he doesn't need to eat. The mask, you know, does that. How is he going to drink? Well, the mask does that. If you have a mask that does everything, you don't need to ever take it off. You know? True enough. So, yeah, I mean, my creation came out a little bit with him, but it's a really awesome story and it's a really awesome character. And at some point, see, the, the thing about every character in this, they all have a traumatic past. It's a traumatic world. You're in a dystopian 
uh, Mad Max meets uh, the Western, you know, the Wild West. So every character has a traumatic past. Foxy, she was a slave. Uh, she was used for all kinds of manners of things you would use a female fox for in that kind of place. And then uh, she ends up killing her boss and taking over the ship, and now she's a pirate. So uh, Toxic Pig, he was a science experiment, you know, and uh, he was, you know, experimented on for years and years and years. And so, but each character deals with their trauma in different ways, you know, just like people, you know, people yeah. deal with their trauma in different ways. And that's kind of the scope I wanted to go and show like the different scope of how people deal with those traumas. So you've got Toxic Pig, he's been through some traumatic shit, but he's like the nicest, you know, little dude, you know? You got Bad Wabby, he's been through some traumatic stuff and he crawled in a bottle. Uh, Foxy Fox, traumatic stuff, but she decided to take it out on the world, you know? And so you got all these different scopes and different uh, characters who deal with their trauma in different ways. So it's something I wanted to point out on that. It's really cool. Okay. Now, do you have any other characters in development that you plan on using in the future? I do. I do. I do. Um, I've got some bounty hunters and assassins uh, that I've uh, developed. Uh, actually, you guys can see what they look like right now on my my uh, Patreon. Mm -hmm. so I've got them posted on the Patreon right now. And uh, also my AUD uh, fan fiction is on there. Uh, cool. The fourth, fourth entry right now. So uh, next Wednesday, I'll be dropping another one. Uh, well, now, since you just brought that up, um, how's that experience been for you? You know, because for anybody that doesn't know, he has been writing in Chris's universe, which is a really neat thing if you get the opportunity to do that, because I did for Jeff Thompson, which was <laughs> cool. But mine was just literally a prologue. You're getting to write like some some lengthy stuff here man and how you know what's that been like for you well before i even started doing that i kind of uh ran it by chris because i respect the guy so much and he's helped me so much i don't like stepping on anybody's toes especially somebody who's helped me so much you know and oh, so absolutely anytime i anytime i make a move in that direction with the aud fan fiction I'm always asking Chris first, you know, like, hey, uh, I want to do this. And I just want to ask you if it's cool. And most of the time he'll, you know, he'll say yes. Uh, sometimes there's like a stipulation, you know, hey, put this at the beginning so they know that this isn't canon or something like that. And I'll be like, okay, no problem, you know. So it's been really cool to be able to write into that world uh, because my character uh, is based on me. His name is Anthony Castro. Uh, he has a dog named Tuckaroo. And uh, they are basically trapped in an apartment building uh, in the zombie apocalypse. And uh, his main mission is to get across the country from Texas to Montana uh, to go and try and rescue his kids and wife who are uh, staying at her mother's house. So it's really based on a lot of people I know, me, uh, the you know, the, the, the apartment is pretty much described as the apartment I live in. So, I mean, I can take pictures of my apartment and put them in pl places to describe the, the apartment he lives in, in the actual story. So it's like that, that related, you know, uh, but, uh, it's very cool. Um, it's been fun. Uh, I've, I've got it on, about i don't know 20 entries uh as of now and i'm just kind of gradually posting those on my patreon uh, a lot of people have told me that the little bit they have read is amazing uh especially uh you know the relationship between my character and tucker because tucker is a smart ass little dog who likes to talk shit <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't he doesn't actually talk, but it's 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 from the the scope of my character uh, interpreting uh, Tucker's, you know, barks and mannerisms. So it's really funny. Uh, you know, like uh, there's a scene where a zombie falls through the ceiling while my character's laying butt naked in bed, recovering from uh, getting injured. And. Uh, you know, he says, oh, well, you know, Tucker started barking like, zombie, zombie, kill it, kill it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so 
<laughs> you know, it's a lot of that stuff. It's really cool. Well, see, I like that because, I mean, let's face it, we have Otis. Mm -hmm. And I can't, if Carl, if you're still around, I apologize. I can't remember the pug's name right off the top of my head. Particles, oh, part particles. 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 Yes, it hit me right as I said that particle. <laughs> and so, and now you've got Tucker. So, dude, yeah, it totally fits. Well, it that's totally why I put bits. Tucker in there, because I was like, well, all these main characters have really cool little animals with them. And I said, man, Tucker would be a perfect little zombie apocalypse partner. He's very smart. We have buttons around the house that let him uh, tell us if he wants to go outside, We uh, treats, want to play, need love. Like, he, what? <laughs> he'll go over there and push him. And, you know, if he wants a treat, he'll come in and he'll say, treat, treat. Mm -hmm. That's his favorite okay. person. So now what type of dog is this we're talking about? He is a border terrier. Uh, I think he's mixed with something else, but maybe Dachshund. But, uh, but he's a very good dog, and he's very, very smart. Smarter than I think he should be. <laughs> <laughs> Tucker, come here. You want to come here? Come yeah, here. cameo, man. We're all about a cameo yeah. with an animal around here. Trust me. Oh, you got the Tucker Roo. He yep, is Carl awesome. Meadows says outraged. Oh my God, look at that. You so, little cutie patootie. This guy is the Tucker from my 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 AUD fan fiction. So he looks just like him. If you guys are ever reading my fan fiction and want to know what that Tucker looks like, there he is. Look like. This is him. Oh, uh, he is absolutely gorgeous. And he is very, very smart. Which makes him dangerous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we uh we thought he was really sick yesterday. Uh, was it yesterday? Day before. Uh, day before, we thought he was really really sick. Uh, he wouldn't eat. He wouldn't drink. He was hiding under stuff and just really like not himself. And uh, we thought maybe we'd have to take him to the vet. And turns out he just missed his mommy. He was depressed because as soon as she walked in, he was fine, just running around yep. playing. Hey mom, hey mom, hey mom, look at me, look at me. And so he's got a character. He's he's something, man. Yeah, we have we've been having to deal with that with uh the new family member. He's been here a little while now, but not that long. Uh, it's a little hairless Chihuahua named Tui, for short for Ratatouille, and uh -huh. he's got separation anxiety way up here. So like if mom leaves because that's her dog, dude, yeah. this guy is freaking out until she finally comes back home. Even yeah. with me here, like dude, come hang out with me. Yeah. Fuck you. No. <laughs> Back Another feeling. No, uh, he was a rescue. Uh, somebody, when he was less than two months old, left him in the parking lot uh, at a shopping uh, store here. Uh, oh. Texas. And somebody found him, took him in. He was riddled with worms and mange and just, he was a poor little guy, you know? And uh, it, we were looking for an emotional support animal for me because it was around the time that I had just got diagnosed and uh, was home a lot and just kind of by myself, you know, and I, oh, my, that sucks. my wife and me wanted to have somebody home with me just to hang out and keep me company. And as soon as we looked for a dog, the first dog we saw was him. And I was like, that, that, that's the one. I want that dog right there. He's beautiful. And uh, we got him. And the day after we got them, we went on a cross country road trip from Texas to Montana to pick up the boys because they were up there with the grandma for the summer. Mm -hmm. We surprised them with the puppy and uh, he did amazing the whole time. Uh, like he was an amazing, you know, even at two months old, he was an amazing traveler. And uh, see, I'm jealous of that because I have never been lucky like that. I think I've had one dog out of the past probably 10 that I've had and cat, the cat included that uh -huh. they just freak the entire time. Hell, I had to dig <laughs> my cat out from underneath my truck seat when he was like still this big because he just, <laughs> he would have, so he has to be in a carrier. Otherwise I ain't no telling where he'll wind up in that thing. Well, now he don't want nothing to do with me. He just loves his mommy. That's how it works. I've always been told people don't pick their pets. Pets pick their people. Yeah. And that's just the way that works. She's his uh, uh, emotional support human. <laughs> that is freaking fantastic. Well, now here, I've got a little question, you know, I mean, because, dude, your art is legit. I mean, I know you're going to do with the imposter syndrome every now and then. Everybody does. It's part of it. But 
dude, your art style is fantastic. Have you thought about, you know, once you really get bad wabbit going and you've got it all figured out and you're pretty much just able to flow with it now, yeah. maybe doing side projects. Like if somebody came to you and were like, Hey man, would you mind designing me a cool cover for this lit RPG? Cause that kind of art would work great for some lit RPG. Action, oh, I'm totally, sure. totally willing to do it now. Um, I just don't have the uh, people making the offers. Uh, but if anybody was willing to make that offer, I mean, I'd be willing to do it. Uh, well, that's why we're putting it out there right now. Yeah, I mean, totally willing to do it. Um, my thing is, like I said, confidence. I'm, I see all these amazing artists and all these amazing covers that, you know, are out there right now. But um, I feel like my art could be better. And I really, really am trying to strive to get it better. And but if anybody's out there and they like what I do and they feel confident in having my stuff on their book or uh, comic Help. book or anything, posters, like, anything. Yeah. anything, you know, I'm willing to do it, you know, and I'm not going to make anybody pay for something they don't like. So I'm probably, I'll be, I'm the kind of person that would show it to you and say, Hey, do you like it? And if you don't, you don't have to pay for it. I'll keep it. You know, you can find somebody else. I don't want to make, people waste their money on something i just went through that myself um with these 3d models uh that i'm trying to get for the kickstarter um i paid a lot of money out to somebody who said they could do something and it ended up not being what i wanted and it never got there and so i had to end up going to a couple of different places to get that model fixed and ready to be printed so at this point i have a printable uh 3d uh model of foxy fox and i have a 3d pr uh, a printable 3d model of uh bad wabbit so and i'm also in the talks with somebody as we speak uh we were supposed to have a meeting today but because it's mother's day we put it over tomorrow uh but about plushies uh for toxic pig plushies oh nice yeah so it's gonna be it's I'm, I'm trying to get as much cool stuff for people on this kickstarter so when they come over there they're getting something it's not just the comic book you know or just a sketch you know i want people to be like dude i've got like one of three of these plushies or i've got the only you know 3d model of uh bad wabbit you know so I want I want it to be very special. Well, hell, I mean, you think of like the 3D models. Something intrigues me about that idea is once you kind of really got the whole Bad Webbit universe set up, you could you could literally make a a, a, a board game, and you oh, got yeah. the figures, and you know, and my figures are not going to be small. These are like eight and a half, nine inch tall figures. Oh, these are dang. These are going to be very rare and very uh, very cool, man. Uh, so the ones that I'm planning on doing, like you may be able, I may decide to let people get the file mm -hmm. to print them out themselves and stuff, but the ones that I'm going to be offering are going to be already printed and painted and looking phenomenal. And then those are going to be the higher tier, uh, models that I'm going to have on the Kickstarter. Well, you see the shelf over here behind me, right? Oh yeah, I, I I expect to see you know Wabbit and for, uh, Foxy. Foxy. Oh yeah, there is plenty of room up there because right now the actually the only like book related uh, figurine I got I got a zombie with its eye poking out up here, <laughs> but other than that, man, eh, you know I got Sebulba up front here, but that was from back. You oh, you're old my. enough you're old enough to remember the Pizza Hut campaign where they had the cup toppers. Oh, yeah. You'd have to go to all three of the main restaurants to get the whole set, you know, because they only did certain ones at certain restaurants. So yeah, I got Sebulba there, and Anakin is up there totally wrapped up in armbands. Like, he's <laughs> literally covered. So, yeah, there is definitely room up there for Bad Wabbit and the rest of the crew. So, like, yeah. dude, I can't wait for you to get that going. It's like, man, I, I'm telling you, you're building a groundswell under you right now so that when things finally hit, it's not gonna be like, oh, okay, well, the book's out. Shit, now I gotta scramble and do all this other stuff. It's gonna be like you're gonna be like, go, nope, ding, 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 and just well, start that's dropping. What I wanted to do is because like somebody's like, oh, well, you should come out with this, or you should do the Kickstarter and then do all this stuff. I'm like, no, I want to do all the stuff, then do the Kickstarter because I want to be able to drop it. I want to be able to drop it at like it's hot, you know, and I don't want to sit there and 
say I'm going to get this, I'm going to get that, and then do the Kickstarter and then try to get those things and it not work. You know, so I want to be able to do the Kickstarter and say, I have it. It's done. It's ready. It's here. Look, you know, like <laughs> look at it. It's right there. You know, so I'm, I'm not a bullshitter and I don't bullshit in anything that I do, um, except maybe, uh, you know, math. I suck. <laughs> But <laughs> hey, just because I want to give him crap, uh, so does Angel. Don't feel bad. <laughs> I love Angel, man. Angel's a good <laughs> me too. <laughs> I, give, I like to give him stuff because when I was editing the King Mino series, he would make some of the silliest little math mistakes, and then I had to fix it all. It's like, dang it, Angel. I'd even text him, <laughs> like, damn it, dude, I am only one paragraph into the first chapter. <laughs> yeah my wife she uh works at a bank so she works with money and adding and subtracting all the time so anytime math questions come up i'm like babe you know <laughs> she's like damn it what do you need <laughs> come in and save me i'm dumb i don't know what to do right but uh no uh i'm definitely gonna like i'm definitely gonna have these things for the kickstarter uh i also have hoodies and shirts uh those are actually pre kickstarter those are things that i was doing those were uh you could say they are bad Wabbit's origins uh because before all, when all this started when i first uh got my diagnosis uh i was doing stuff to sell on shirts <laughs> so that was my first thing it was called deadmanwalkingtees.com hence the dm uh, the poster Definitely. behind you back there yep exactly you, you see it right there uh and that's the hoodie the reason why my character my uh logo is a hoodie is because that's my my bread and butter i love hoodies i i surprised i don't have one on right now i but, say you and my mom that's like her you know, favorite piece of clothing that's my thing and uh i've got some awesome hoodies uh that you can get on there uh shirts and a lot of that stuff is very limited like i'm gonna be taking some of that stuff off as soon as the kickstarter drops but if you want uh, to go check it out and get some of that pre comic book uh bad wabbit and foxy and toxic big stuff now's the time to do it because it's gonna be uh very rare uh that anybody has that stuff uh i know there's a few people out there um, my friend, uh, Mickey Hoover, who, uh, the name bad rabbit is based on. Okay. Yeah. His, his, uh, his nickname is rabbit. And, uh, when I first started drawing bad rabbit, I was kind of thinking to him, what would, you know, <laughs> so <laughs> I drew, uh, his look kind of like, what would, what would Mickey look like if he was a uh, rabbit, you know, an actual rabbit. So that's what I went with. And, uh, so, you know, he's got the very, very, very first uh, Bad Wabbit hoodie ever made. And that thing is probably going to be worth some money if this ever takes off. So, Absolutely. Yeah, That's all the more reason to get it. That's all yeah. the more reason to go get this stuff. Because I, I, everything I'm seeing just in the concept and design, if your story is solid, your writing is solid, the art's, the art's there. It's fine. I, I, I'm No problem with that. Yeah. If that story hits, dude, watch out. You know? Well, you know, I, I can come up with some of the really good concepts with my art, but I always hand those things over to Tommy Guns, who is my actual artist, the guy that's drawing the actual comic book. And he is phenomenal. I'm talking about Studio Ghibli rival rivalry. Like he can come up with some really good, good art. Um, a lot of the first book takes place inside the bar, uh, the mm -hmm. show so it's a lot of inside stuff uh in the first book but once we get to the second book and you're outside and they're having the big chases and stuff like that you're going to get to really see his uh ability with landscapes and locations and i'm telling you right now that stuff blew me away when i saw his uh, his landscape art uh, that's actually what made me really really want him because i was like this is going to be a lot of outside stuff once you get into it oh yeah it's going to be a traveling story you know he's going to be traveling across this land and i want it to look like an awesome place to be you know and so his landscape work is so phenomenal i just can't even imagine like what he could do like it's it's gonna be great dude with a name like 
Tommy Guns. Uh-huh. It just it's gonna be cool. <laughs> I mean, well, come yeah. on now. Tommy well, Guns, really? That's not his real name, but that's the name no. I gave him. That's the, the moniker I gave him, and he loved it. He was like, dude, I totally love it. Let's stick with that. I, you know, because he's he works uh he's in China and he works for me from there. Okay. Uh, and he uh his real name is Lian Sin Chi. I think that's how you pronounce it. I am not Chinese and nor do I speak it. So I am doing my best, but because it was so difficult for me to, to pronounce, uh, I kind of gave him a nickname and he loved it. And he was like, well, we'll go with that. So he's been doing a really good job, man. He's so dedicated. I've never met anybody so dedicated besides myself to this project. Hell, a bonus to that. Hell, you've got an artist doing your art in China, and there's like 200 billion people living there. I'm sure some of them buy comic books. Just well, saying. I, yeah, I mean, I told him, I said, you know, once this is all done, everything, if you want to get it translated into, you know, your language and start pushing it out there, and we can get it all over the world, get it in Japanese, German, Russian, uh, you know, English. Hello, mate. <laughs> oh, hello we're gonna piss coral meadows off again sorry about that bro. i had to do it i had to do it <laughs> see carl it's not just me yeah now, but i tell you like i said i i keep hyping on you know how much i'm looking forward to you know this finally being done you know the first the first issue being in the hand but now on a more personal level on this are you prepared to have fans Cause that's something I didn't think of. I've literally had people say, Oh, I love your show. I'm a fan of yours. And I'm like, get out of here. I drive a forklift. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, but are you um, prepared for that? Well, I mean, it's going to be a different kind of fan base, I guess. But like I did music before. And when I was doing music, I actually got pretty well known, uh, especially locally. Uh, I'll never forget the first time uh, it happened. I was in a Planet K. I don't know if you know what that is. It's kind of smoke shop or whatever. Mm. Know, for I was looking for a bong or something. And uh, I was talking to the girl across the counter. And I was like, hey, you know, can I get your number? And she was like, she was like, ah, you're a bum. I don't want to talk to you. Whatever, you know, trying to give me the cold shoulder. And while I'm standing there trying to talk to her, some guy I never met in my whole entire life walks up to me and he goes, hey, aren't you Castro? And I was like, yeah. And he goes, bro, I got your CD in my car. That shit jams. He's like, can I get you to sign it? And so uh, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he ran out, got a CD, brought it back in. I signed it. And uh, as soon as he walked away, the girl was like, who are you? <laughs> Listen, nobody. I'm a bum. <laughs> I don't even know who that guy was. Yeah, dude. yeah. Some guy I met in the restroom. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, uh, real quick. Um, <laughs> okay, so uh, first Aiden says, "Damn, you're at it again, Jack Childress." <laughs> and then Carl Meadows, it's like a virus. <laughs> Jack has a natural talent of interviewing and making it fun. He <laughs> he, that was Angel. <laughs> You see, you got to be careful who you pair me up with because the hijinks and the hilarity will ensue at some point. It's just part of it. Mm-hmm. Well, I love being on here, man. I love coming up here and cutting it up with you guys. You and, and you know, all the other guys. That one guy, uh, what's his name? Uh, Dungeon something. Oh, yeah, yeah, that pain in the ass. I know exactly who you're talking about. Still trying to figure out a way to get a ticket to uh, Texas and <clears throat> handle business. <laughs> But anyhow, um, now here's my thing. Um, how do you plan on? Oh, actually, that's not actually how I want to ask it. The way I need to ask it because you know you said you're on disability, and I know they they can be restrictive about income. Yeah. In your situation, releasing something that's just artistic, you know, like this, is there like a point if you hit a level where they're all of a sudden gonna be like, ah. Hey, you know, we can't pay you anymore because you're you're doing too much. You know, you're making too much money. Is that like a thing you're going to have to deal with? Well, if I get to a point where I'm making too much money to be on disability, then I'm not going to be worried about disability. True enough. <laughs> you True know enough. What I mean? So um, that's that's not a worry for me. Um, if I'm making enough money to where uh, it outweighs my disability, because uh, I'm you know I'm not afraid to share. I only get like eight fifteen a month. Oh, damn. Yeah. So 
imagine, you know, having two kids, bills and all that stuff, and then still trying to do this on just that once a month, you know, and it's not easy. You have to really budget. You have to really know uh, what you're doing. You have to look for the best deals. And that's one of the things I've learned through this whole thing is networking and really like looking for the best deals you can possibly ever get, you know, and it's, it's been a really good lesson in business for me because I didn't go to school for business. This is all just stuff I'm learning as I go. And so it's been, it's been an interesting journey. Um, it's something that I'm trying to, to really hone and, and, and get to where like later on down the road, I will know what I'm doing. I will know where to get the best deals. I will know who to talk to to get those deals and get this made and get this drawn and get this sold and so forth and so on, you know? Well, so I'll tell you this much um, and I'll just say it here and I'll just make it a proclamation, even though I can only 90% say I can back it up. <laughs> you get that book out, you get that, you get that first one out physical copies it's out there in the world if i guess i'm assuming you're going to do like digital as well you know like a lot of the like comicsology or like yeah. i don't even know if that's still a thing or not yeah it is okay but you know stuff like that to get it out there once you get that done i will do everything i can to be, make you a featured author in written undead and the asylum of fear and in other places but we got to get that bad boy out there you know oh, yeah. once you get that yeah. done though because i'm telling you you become a featured author things change well they I, do change i appreciate that and i definitely am going to be doing a lot of outlets for this book it's going to be physical it's going to be digital i'm even uh considering once uh we get a little bit of that money coming in uh doing uh, an action comic uh where it's uh motion you know and with voice actors sweet and all that stuff and uh it'll be it'll probably be like a year after the first one comes out but I'll put it on my YouTube um, and people can go and watch the action comic and it'll be cool. Well, if you need a redneck sounding character, just holler at me. I'll see what I can do for you there. We can get some <laughs> stuff done, some fried chicken, some taters, biscuits and such. <laughs> maybe, maybe. I think there's one character who has quite a, a, a Southern uh, talk to him. So that'd be cool, man. Hell yeah. Well, man. We've already hit past the hour mark, but if you got more you want to keep talking about, dude, let's just keep going. I'm good for now. Like I said, I still got a little while before I got to get in here and make that Mother's Day dinner. Well, uh, I definitely would like to pick a winner for Ooh. the uh, self, you know, for the uh, sketch, signed sketch of Bad Wabbit. So I'm going to go over here and uh, look through this here. Um, uh, I think I'm going to just pick it random. Yeah, we got us a few names in here. Uh, about Aiden Coiler. Collier. Collier. Aiden Yay. Collier. Hot. Damn, the archaeologist has won him a prize. So Aiden Collier, uh, message me and uh, give me your mailing info. And I will send you a hand-drawn uh, sketch of Bad Wabbit done by me, the creator of Bad Wabbit, signed and everything. Well, Sounds just so good. you know, um, he's in the UK. Oh, so, shit. Yeah, we got to we got, we got do some international shipping on that action. It's all good, man. We'll figure it out. Yeah, but Aiden's a cool dude, man. I'm happy that he, he won that because uh, yeah, he does Angel Show um, with him. Uh, that's the, the scraggly looking guy that loves like paintball and things like that and he happens to be an archaeologist like legit you know oh, but he's not cool, he's man. he's not the indiana jones type like he's not out like going through like pyramids and stuff but no you know bullshit. over in you know but in england when they're doing new constructions and stuff he goes in and uh makes sure that there's nothing there that doesn't need to be disturbed you know and other things and well I've awesome i've shipped stuff all over the world uh with my um my clothes and my my hoodies and all this stuff from australia england uh the you know africa japan so we'll get it done ah look at here aiden says "Ooh, that will go on the wall we can sort out some shipping heck yeah i'm down with that and uh just a flashback i guess after my uh need to go to texas and kick dan's ass uh he said come on over jack got a paul got a ball punch waiting for you 
<laughs> he don't know my ball's so big, they'll just bounce up and punch him in the chin. Right. <laughs> you see that he'll bounce off his chin, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Done brought the redneck out of me on that one. Oh, man. But, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, man. If you guys want, uh, I will put my uh, link to the Kickstarter again down here in the chat so everybody can go ahead and uh grab a chance to go and check that out uh, like i said there's going to be so much limited stuff on there that you're not going to get it anywhere else i mean it's going to be a one-time thing uh, as far as i know and there it is i just put it in the chat it's very uh, cool starter Go sign up for it. Um, it'll it's in pre-launch mode right now, and if you push the green button, you will be notified uh, when it when it goes live. Um, I probably will uh, echo Chris's uh, thing where he did it live when he pushed the button. So I might have a live and uh, just push the button live and let you guys know and hang out for about a you know a couple minutes and see where it goes. Uh, awesome. I'm, not it to, I'm not expecting it to explode. Uh, Chris has got funded in like 76 minutes or something like that. I'm not expecting that. But yeah, that was insane. That's insane. That's just crazy. But yeah, I, I appreciate you having me. And it's been a blast as always. And I hope I get to come back and hang out with you again sometime. Well, you're, well, you're absolutely going to get to do that, especially for the book release. Once that okay. happens, we're doing a book release party. Come on now. Oh, yeah. But now, uh, real quick, because uh, let's get some more members over in your other groups. Let everybody know where all they can find you on Facebook. Well, you can go to DMW Comics. Uh, that is where I post all the latest, coolest, neatest stuff for uh, my comic books and all that stuff. Uh, if you guys just friend me, I'm I'm very friendly, so you can always he is. Uh, you can always just come and and check out my. Uh, you know, personal page. I'm a very personable person. <laughs> so uh, that's cool. And uh, let's see, DM, uh, dmwcomics.com. You can go there um, and you can find all my social stuff, like anything that has to do with my social links, uh, Twitter, Twitch, uh, my store, all that stuff is on dmwcomics.com. So if you want to, that's the best place to go, I guess, is dmwcomics.com. So go check that out and and definitely uh, add me as a friend. Stay tuned. Get on that Kickstarter, and we're gonna have a party, bro. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it big, baby. That's how we do it around here. All about the indie. Thank well, you. ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in for this very special edition of the Book Asylum podcast. Uh, granted, it's on an off day, but it was totally worth it. One of the best interviews I've done in quite a while. Not oh, happy others, Mother's Day. It's all oh, yes, and happy Mother's Day. Yes, exactly. Thank you for calling that, even though I'm about to go cook Mother's Day dinner. <laughs> uh, and for the record, uh, anybody that knows how to make shepherd's pie usually uses ground beef or, like you said, chip beef, anything like that. Try adding... A, the, a pound package of breakfast sausage hot mild regular whatever dude takes it to a whole nother level just mm -hmm. saying so now you know what i'm cooking for dinner and you can't have none <laughs> so with that for anthony castro i am jack childress all you guys again thank you so much for tuning in and we will see you somewhere in the future and anthony i don't know what's going to happen when i hit that end button so if we both just disappear i'll holler at you in the dms my brother thank you for coming on no problem brother thank you Peace out.